I said thank you, Ward. So and yes, Lane's Lane's on the hot seat now. <clears throat> so Lane, um, I, I guess you and I have spoken. One of the things I wanted to ask about, since it is a twenty-year celebration, is uh, is how you got started uh, with Wikipedia. Oh goodness! Uh, I know, I know, big broad. I know. Well, uh, Ward Ward is in Portland. Uh, I was living in Seattle. Through the through the early 2000s, so that's the same region of the United States, and I, I came to hear about Wikipedia while I was an undergraduate in college, and I was aware. So I edited Wikipedia the first time in, in 2004. I actually became aware of a wiki community uh, in in Seattle a, a couple of years later, with some of the people who had contact with Ward. So even though I didn't know who Ward was at the time. I feel like there was an activist community trying to share information, talking about free and open software licenses, free and open media, uh, and then Wikipedia as well. And so I, I edited Wikipedia as a, as a student around that time. Somehow not so aware of this activist community, but the ideas were bubbling through in different places. And I, I clicked edit and, and tried, tried to edit Wikipedia in that context. And then you were hooked? From, from that point on? I, I, well, I clicked edit to vandalize Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, okay. So I didn't, didn't have good intentions in the beginning, but that's the way a lot of people get started. Then that's not necessarily a bad thing. So in yeah. the early days of the internet, uh, now we know that there's behaviors that we should practice, civility. Uh, everyone's got their first day on the internet. There's <laughs> uh, pe people coming on all the time and they have to explore a bit themselves, but Wiki is very forgiving. If someone vandalizes, there's ways to revert it and talk to the people and say, this is inappropriate behavior, this is appropriate behavior. We work these, these things out and yeah. it's, it's a very forgiving space. I, but I, uh, yeah, uh, eventually I, I give it a few tries and I got hooked. A lot of people have this story. You, uh, so I wanna touch on that because you, you talked about Wikipedia as a civil infrastructure uh, where people can place their trust. Hmm. Like that's really what it's become. Can you say more about that? About well, there's uh, a few interesting characteristics of Wikipedia. I, I say the, the most attractive aspect of Wikipedia is that people actually read it. So there's so many websites, anyone can start a website, but it's come to pass over the years that Wikipedia has become very popular. Many people around the world in many languages, they're reading Wikipedia. There's different other platforms that drive traffic to Wikipedia. If you're looking for information on a general reference topic, want some objective information, you go to Wikipedia. But that doesn't, the, the traffic alone doesn't build trust. There's a lot of popular websites. People can actually speak back to Wikipedia in a meaningful way. As Ward was saying, you read it, you can also edit it. There's an editing button there. And there's uh, also like Ward was saying, still baked into Wikipedia from the very beginning is the idea of having conversations with the other editors. So it's possible to look into the history logs of any given Wikipedia article, see what's who's been editing, what have they edited, check out how it's been vandalized as well. Uh, and when you examine this history and who's done it and you get to ask questions, make a complaint if you, if you wish, edit it yourself, yeah. then that develops trust in the system. And over time, as this happens over and over again with, with different articles over the years, I think that builds trust in the entire infrastructure of the idea of sharing information in this way. Yeah, that's great. What about people who believe things that are not true and come back to put something in an article that is then flagged or taken out by people who can demonstrably say that's not true and then they, they sort of keep coming back? Uh, what about that? Does that sure. happen? That sure. So uh, there's different different kinds of things that aren't true. So there's differing <laughs> opinions. Uh, so two people can both have valid opinions, maybe political sides. And uh, in that case, you want both of the opinions to be in there because opinions, it's not about true or not true. It's just, it's just differing perspectives in the world. So we want those in Wikipedia well represented. And people do get upset about that when they read, a, read an opposing opinion, opinion, whether political or ethical or, or, or some such thing. But Wikipedia doesn't try to mediate what's right or wrong. It tries to present major perspectives that exist in the world. The other kind of thing that might not be true is a 
fringe belief or a mistaken belief, something that comes from a source that isn't reliable. And Wikipedia has ways of moderating these as well. If someone identifies a fringe belief, they can bring it to Wikipedia and say, hey, uh, I think this, this goes in. And there's a mediation process for making a decision about whether to include this in the Wikipedia article. So there can be, mm, say, a, a minor view or a fringe view about COVID vaccine. And it doesn't mean that someone's spreading misinformation. It could mean that they're really trying to become informed, but somehow they just got a bad source of information or an inadequate source of information. We'll still log these on the top pages of the Wikipedia articles to say someone's raised this issue, someone's proposed it. Here's the timestamp, here's the discussion of it. And I think even if someone's bringing fringe views, even if people bring fringe views into Wikipedia repeatedly, they can have trust that they're being heard and that the editorial community has sincerely considered their request to include this in the article. So even if it doesn't appear in Wikipedia, that's a good thing. If it appears in Wikipedia and it's marked uncertain fringe view, that can be a good thing as well, but there is an editorial process in place. Yeah. That's uh, it's very, very important. And since you brought up COVID, uh, I will ask you uh, about that. You talked about uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia being uh, an incredible source of medical information uh, hmm. for, for lots of people. Um, so uh, how do you think uh, the, the role of Wikipedia as an international um, you know, source is, is working right now in, in the world and for COVID? Gosh, it's, a, it's a strange thing. Obviously the world had a, a great desire for objective, neutral, general reference information on, on many topics. And for whatever reason, there just wasn't a, a commercial model that could keep up with this quickly enough so that there was a major media organization handling this. Certainly there were encyclopedias, but before the wiki age, encyclopedias were updated uh, every few years, perhaps even every 10 years. And with Wikipedia, a major difference in the model of the encyclopedia is it's, uh, if, if there's an event today, there's a Wikipedia article about it getting made today. <laughs> so that's a different, different concept of things. Uh, with COVID, I guess something unusual about Wikipedia, it seems to be the case that Wikipedia is, for COVID and for a great many other topics, Wikipedia is the most requested, published, accessed, and consulted source of information on COVID. Certainly a lot of people talk with each other about COVID. Certainly people talk with their doctors about COVID. But if you're looking for what is the single most popular source of information, it's probably Wikipedia. And if anyone's got uh, art metrics, communication metrics, which show otherwise, we in the Wiki community would really like to see that. Uh, the popularity of Wikipedia, it really inspires people to keep the information up to date and accurate. A lot of editors are contributing to this. And there's a continual invitation for more people to contribute sharing whatever, whatever news there is about COVID. All right. Um, well, I, guess I have one more question, although I see Sherry here. I think that's the, that's the hey, I think you have a moment if it's a quick one, Robert. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. We'll be quick. Just another thing uh, Lane had brought up was uh, one of the shortcomings uh, of Wikipedia internationally uh, was the, uh, that major languages uh, don't have enough editors uh, just yet. Uh, because uh, the key, uh, as you said, is the human participation uh, and good automated processes. So just thought maybe you'd say something about that yeah, looking sure, forward. I'm sure going to talk more about this, but it, it is a good. shortcoming of Wikipedia that it's he heavy on English and heavy on majority demographics and light on non-English and minority demographics. Mm -hmm. So in different ways, we're recruiting more people to do translation, more diverse communities and more diverse perspectives. COVID's not just a medical issue, it's also a social issue, an economic issue with the same, same, same is true for any other kind of condition. Um, Sherry, why don't, you, why don't you take it from here? <laughs> thanks, Robert. All right, thanks, Lee.